our topic today is negative painting and one of the best subjects that you can do that with is ornamental grasses. I really love ornamental grasses, especially because of the simplicity of their shapes. And when I come to Japan, of course, I see many familiar grasses. I'm a West Coast Canadian girl, and they are very familiar. I love the negative shapes. I love the fact that I can enjoy them. I won't ever be able to afford to plant them in Canada, but I can sure enjoy them here for free. Here's a shot of Niko Jarashi, which means cat. And it is everywhere right now at this time of the year in July. It just uh, lines all the streets, it's bright green, and uh, it just allows for some wonderful negative painting shapes. So we're gonna head to the studio and I'm gonna show you once I've got my drawing, we'll start. With my light pencil drawing, um, I'm working on a soft paper called Watson. Uh, it was available here in Japan. Uh, you can see I'm using my large sky wash brush to just lay in water, clean water. And I don't mind even if I leave a few pieces with like dry, no, no water at all. Um, but the main thing is that I'm using a large brush because I want to work in the large shapes first. And with negative painting, you're really mostly working around the shapes that you have drawn. Um, in a loose way, you don't have to be entirely accurate because the paper's wet and it's this whole process at this stage is quite intuitive. Um, when we're working in negative painting, it's excellent for design because it's great for abstracting shapes. And uh, you can see that by drawing specific shapes and then painting around them, we can uh, kind of design as we go, even beyond what the drawing is which is great. Um, a book that I've been studying when I come to Japan, there's a lot of what we'd say very principled approaches to uh, painting and drawing. Uh, and an excellent book that I have been studying is called The Laws of Japanese Painting. And this book was put out in the 1900s by um, a lawyer. His name was Henry Pike Bowie. He was a lawyer, he was an artist, and he was an author and a diplomat. And he had a lot to um, explore and understand. And in fact, in Japan, in July, it's considered a period called the Seven Grasses of Autumn. July is thought of as the time when we would study the grasses. We can see here that I'm laying in the darkest values after I put in the preliminary soft, wet and wet washes. And it, I'm just trying to focus in on the, the little edges of the grass because the paper is still wet, but I can get some soft edges there. And uh, now I'm working with my flat brush, a three quarter to one inch flat brush. It's a short, bright, I call it. So it's quite a snappy brush and it has a lot of lifting capability. So you can see I just keep coming in with a clean flat brush and lifting those edges so that I can work around them again later when the paper is dry. I'm still trying to explore design at this point, so um, things are pretty random, exploratory, and abstracted. I wouldn't be uh, hesitant to throw down even more color at this stage because it's um, pretty neutral, everything. But anyways, I'm just babysitting those edges, lifting carefully trying to preserve uh, an outer glow around those shapes. So it's uh, kind of messy at this point. So pretty much all the values are light still. It's a light to middle tone um, wash situation right now. And it's just about time to start banging in some darks because the darks begin to key you. Um, and then I can begin to relate the different values one to another. 
I'm not thinking I want the painting particularly high key, meaning really light. Um, I think it's uh, going to work around the light to middle tone range. But here we go with the darker values. I've also switched over to my very large number six rigger. I like to work with this brush because it has a snap to it as well. And it, it um, comes down to enough of a point that we can get some detail, but it also creates some wide marks when you lay it on a side and kind of drag its belly. And I wouldn't normally bring in such a pointed brush uh, in other situations because if you go small and tight and tiny with a brush, uh, it can keep your work really tight. So the only reason I'm bringing in it at this point is because I want to protect the edges of those leaves or grasses because they're very fine. So here I'm working now with a bigger brush again, either the one inch flat or my large quill brush uh, and introducing darker values and designing, finding more form and shapes beneath the layer, the first layer, and just designing new shapes in behind the, the main shapes, uh, trying to keep the brush large. It's good to consider temperature changes too. So I'm bringing in some warmer uh, orange greens and uh, just uh, keep those value ranges and temperatures in the neutrals uh, slightly different. The cool and the warm creates a nice contrast in design. I'm playing with color and shapes. I'm still in the sort of exploring stage. It's I'm not afraid of anything at this point. Any mark I put down, any color, anything I put down on that paper, there's a lot of forgiveness to it because it either can be lifted while it's wet or lifted while it's dry. So especially working on a paper that is uh, soft and uh, conducive to lifting, it just frees us up to not have to be concerned about uh, this very intuitive way of designing. So we can see the benefit of glazes because a little close up here, uh, the original light colored stems, those vertical stems, now that they have a, a cool blue green laid over top of them, they become mysterious and go off into the depths. And we can also see that water applied to the surface creates some interesting abstract design and texture. And if you're lucky, it's going the same way and direction as the painting. And there you have it.